Well, you can see my first repair on bubbles <laughs> is a success, and that was an easy one. Lubricating these hinges and cleaning out those drain holes, that's probably the first thing you should check anytime <laughs> you get a W123. Now, I do have some adjustment to do on the hood latch assembly. Same thing with the 240D, and I'm going to do a complete video on adjusting these W123 hoods later. Now, the second thing I'm going to fix, and Kaya pointed this out. Let's go back to that road trip when we went down and, and got bubbles. Notice what she said about the transmission. Oh. How many diesels kind have you driven over the years? Involved. Hundreds. hundreds. I haven't owned hundreds, but I've driven hundreds. Okay. And I can tell you right now that it's shifting way too soon. So okay. it's probably going to need a vacuum yeah, modulator, gonna, some adjustments yeah, there. Look at this. I wonder if she'll show this right? one on the deal. <laughs> but the power, the power okay. is awesome. All right. All right. Let's, let's see how see she does, does down on the south. power test and see how it shifts, okay? Oh, oh see? Yeah. A little bit soon. We've got a vacuum a soon. issue with the transmission, but I tell you, but, a jerk is certainly a lot better than a slip. Yeah. I think we can adjust that out. Wow. Look at the steering. What's with the steering? No hands, Ma. Check play. Wow. Check steering play. Super plate. tight. No steering play? Wow, that's awesome. That's really unusual. Very, a, very nice so far. For a diesel with a, over 190,000 on it. And so sure enough, all the way home, you know, she had a jerking transmission. Now, if your transmission jerks when it shifts, as I said in that video, it, that's a good sign because it probably means there's something wrong with a vacuum getting to the transmission. If the transmission slips too much, that's a whole different matter and can be a, a lot bigger problem. So what I did today is, okay, let's see if this is a simple fix. I mean, I really love simple fixes. Maybe I can fix this and not spend any more than five minutes and spend no money at all. Because if you understand how the vacuum system works in these old Mercedes is related to the automatic transmission, this is particularly the diesels. Because the diesels are a little bit weird. <laughs> They're a lot different than the gas engine. So what I did is I just got in here and started poking around at the vacuum lines. You know, interesting story. The very first Mercedes I bought was an 82 240D. And I did an oil change. And right after the oil change, I went to drive it and it wouldn't shift. And I called up the previous owner. I said, hey, what happened? What, what did you sell me here? He said to me over the phone, he said, Kent, what did you just do on the car? And I said, well, I just did an oil change. He said, hey, uh, check your vacuum lines. <laughs> sure enough, I had knocked the vacuum lines off to the transmission. And I got poking around here on a Bubbles engine looking at all these vacuum hoses. And <laughs> guess what? Look what I found. So here's the location of the oil filter and you have to pull this cap off and pull the oil filter out. And you have all these vacuum lines running around close to this cap on these W123s. And sure enough, you know, I got looking at this line right here. Look at this. Look at this little green dash pot here. It totally is unplugged from the VCV valve. Now this is the valve that controls the shifting on these five-cylinder diesel automatics. And without vacuum, and this is the line that goes off to the transmission, so without vacuum going down to the transmission, that could mean that we may just have found the problem because without that vacuum, the transmission is going to jerk hard when it shifts. So let's see what happens. Let's plug this vacuum line back in. Maybe the previous person who did the oil change accidentally unplug that. See, it's tight. Make sure all your vacuum connections are tight. Sometimes these get oil in them and they get loose. Make sure there's none of them are cracked. All right, I'm gonna hop in this thing. We're gonna hit the road and see how the transmission works now. This is one of the fun things about working on these old cars is finding problems and fixing them in just a matter of minutes. Particularly annoying problems like a jerking shifting automatic transmission. Now I'm crossing my fingers here, there's no guarantee, but it won't take long for me to determine whether or not this is going to fix the problem. If I want it to shift through all four gears, I've got to put it down into low range and then put it up back up into drive so it'll start off in first. Let's see what happens from a dead stop. Okay. 
Boy, this thing's got some power. Boy, that's a whole lot better. Now, there's still a little bit of a brightness to the shift. Remember, you don't want the shifts to be too soft because it's hard on the transmission clutch pack. So, I'm going to pull off the road here and check the boat cable. Maybe that boat cable is slightly out of adjustment because it is kind of shifting late now. Before, it was shifting very early. So here's the Bowden cable. This goes from the linkage down to the transmission, and this con controls the timing of the shifts. But I'm moving this lever, and look how stiff that is. It should just spring right back. So I have a lubrication problem with the linkage here that can also be affecting the transmission. I'm not going to explain how to adjust the Bowden cable. That's explained in my manual, but I'm just going to do a quick adjustment here. But I think the problem is a, a lubrication. So let's get a little lubricant on there. <laughs> Since this is all I have right now. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off the dipstick and put it back in. Then I'll come back and we'll work that lever a little bit. Now I can see here this whole linkage is gonna need lubrication, but look what a little engine oil did now to this lever. See how it springs back? It springs right back. It's not binding up. And let's see, I've got a little bit of play in there. I'm going to adjust it a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> let's see what that does. All right, I'm going to floor it. What a difference! Look at that! All the way up to 50 miles an hour, and then shifts into fourth. Look at that, smooth. No more jerking. Can you believe that? Ten minutes and zero dollars. Those are the type of repairs we all like. So the next repair is going to be the front brakes, because I also don't like the chattering when I hit the the brake pedal, you know, Kai pointed that out immediately. Watch this, see? You can feel the chattering in the front. So I've got front brake rotors we say are, what do we call them? We call them potato chipped. <laughs> now, if you have one of these turbo diesels like this and you're having problems with the transmission shifting properly, I've got a 130 page manual on how to tune these babies. I've also got gauges and equipment so that you can adjust the VCV and you can also adjust the modulator pressure. So don't give up hope. If you have a jerking transmission, it may not be as easy to fix as this one, but I offer the resources to give you a chance to fix your own and fix it right.